Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Three Pinots in front of me, Pinot Noir, um, and uh, we have, yeah, we've got three different countries. I'm doing them in alcohol order, uh, so that means I go France, Australia, California. Uh, and uh, so the first one I've got is from France, and so this is Le Latour Marange 2012. Uh, now, the eagle-eyed among you will notice that there's already some gone from the bottle. Uh, I had a glass of it last night, actually I had a glass and a bit of it last night, um, and uh, I was going to do the video then, and... Uh, uh, after I'd, I'd just opened it, but it, I, I felt that it, this was a wine that needed maybe a little bit more time to uh, uh, to open up. So let's just see what, what state it is now. So that was about, what time is it now? Ooh, 18 hours ago. So the problem I had with it first time round uh, was it felt like there, there were pretty flavours. So gentle raspberry, a little bit of stalkiness in there, um, and um, it felt like it was... They, there was okay flavours, but maybe not quite enough of them. Now, sometimes I see with wines like that that uh, uh, a little bit of time open, uh, and certainly with Burgundy's overnight uh, can do wonders to uh, to young ones. Um, I, I I was thinking, is it going to get to uh, um, expand? And first smell, and the answer says no. Uh, there's still it still feels light, a fey. Um, it's got, um, yeah, it's still got the, this raspberry edge, and uh, if anything, that stalkiness is, is getting a little bit, uh, uh, it's going a little bit barnyardy as well, so there's, a, there's, a, there's the stalkiness uh, and um, a little bit of, uh, is it bread? I don't know, but uh, anyway, let's taste it. Bits of it are okay. As I said, this light raspberry, I, I quite like that, uh, but there's a hardness about it that, um, I mean, 2012, I've... Uh, um, some of the 2012s of, uh, which I've tried so far, I had a lovely Bourgogne, just yeah, just basic Bourgogne Rouge the other day, Machard de Grammel, um, and it was a lot richer, a lot more supple than this. Uh, here, it feels, it feels light, but in in uh, there's not the delicacy with it. It feels light and uh, um, underflavoured. Hmm. Hey. Uh, let's see whether we got a bit more flavour in uh, Santolin, is that, or San Santolin, Family Reserve, uh, 2013 Yarra Valley Pinot. Uh, and so this is uh, one done for Naked Wines, um, and let's give it a whirl. And it's similarly pale in colour to the, the Marange, but uh, there's just an extra weight of fruit here. Um, so there's a juiciness, there's a little bit of mint going on in there, uh, but it's more on this, um, yeah, there's a blueberry, um, uh, yeah, a bit of the, the red berries too, and some cherry in there. Uh, it feels like it's going to have, uh, yes, the delicacy, but also that, that core of um, mid-palate flesh, people call it. In other words, depth of flavour that uh, wasn't there in the first one. Sweet, juicy, rounded, and um, but then fresh. Uh, and um, I was talking about stalkiness on the first one. Here, uh, I don't know whether they've used a, a few whole bunches in there, so in other words, there'll still be some grape stalks uh, left in when the fermentation's uh, are going on. Uh, but there is this, um, uh, there's a welcome stalkiness here. Uh, in the first one, the stalkiness poked out. Here, because there's enough flesh around it, uh, it's there as an element um, as, yes, a, 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 one of those uh, bit part players rather than taking centre stage. Uh, and yes, there's this edge of eucalyptus that comes through. Uh, not too much. So again, uh, it, when that flavour takes centre stage, it, it ruins wines. Here, in the background, but just there, just making its presence felt every now and then. Uh, the main thing I like about it is, it's just this generous flavour, and um, that's slightly what I call the woody cherry flavour coming through. Uh, when you when you get those really dark cherries, and it's not there's no you're not tasting wood, but there is a flavour of woody cherry. I know what I mean. I'm going to have another slug and shut up for the moment. And I do like that. Mm, I do. Uh, let's see whether I like the final one, which is uh, Matt Parrish, um, Pinot Noir, Santa Rita Hills in California, 2013 vintage, weighing in at 14.5% um, alcohol. Let's give this one a whirl. Now, I've just got these out of a reasonably coolish cellar, um, and um, I think that they, it's the perfect temperature for tasting this. It's, it, I mean, uh, sometimes Californian Pinot Noir, if you have it at... Uh, uh, at, at higher temperatures, it goes a bit soupy. Here, I don't think it's ever it's ever going to be one of those wines that's super soupy. But at this temperature, uh, you you there's something of the exotic character that is being lifted up by the um, uh, the higher alcohol. But it, it it means it's coming across as sort of velvety and truffly and um, dark fruit, bit of uh, cherry in there. 
It smells rich and alluring. It's almost like um, a Pinot Noir from the Southern Rhone, if that makes sense. Yeah, there's a touch of coffee in there, something spicy like cinnamon, uh, and this warm, plush berry and cherry fruit. A uh, touch of velvet, I really like the texture. Um, and um, I was talking a bit before about the, 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 this idea of the temperature. I think, yes, it, it, serve it on the cooler side, because I feel the warmth of alcohol uh, rather than the burn of alcohol. So um, a, a, bit, a bit higher temperature and uh, maybe that alcohol would poke out more. But at this temperature, it's just adding, um, yeah, as I say, that either idea of the Southern Rhone warmth, um, it feels, um, I, I'm not saying it's, it's an overripe, uh, like Grenache-like wine, but uh, what, it, what, I, what I mean by that is um, uh, there, there's Pinot Noir that's uh, tense and uh, spiky. Uh, this is on that plusher, warmer, a draft of the warm south type of, uh, type of character, uh, but fresh finish. And um, I like both of those last two. Um, and the Morange... Maybe we won't talk about that one, but uh, uh, only problem for me is um, that there's only one of me tonight. So which of these do I go for first? Maybe a glass of each. I think that's a good compromise. See you soon.